going. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We got challenged to tabletop 20 questions. Yep, by um, our good friends in, at, in the board game. Yeah. Hi. Yep. So super excited to, um, to get challenged. So let's get into it. So one of the first questions is name, age, and location. So um, this might be... Get it. Hey, if you don't know us, it might be time because yeah. I think we I mean, just... a lot of these questions we already answered in some of it yeah. on our anniversary yeah, but video. Got a lot but of new we got people. a lot of new people. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, my name is uh, Miranda Wilson. I am known as uh, Dragon Mother. That's right. And I am 34. <laughs> I think I think you should have let me go on first because it would have been less creepy. <laughs> uh, I, uh, so I'm 34 years old, and obviously we are near um, the Louisville area, Louisville, Kentucky, near there. Um, southern so, Indiana. Southern mm -hmm. Indiana, um, across the river. But uh, that's kind of me. What about you? I think I know your last name. Yeah, I am Randy Wilson, also known as Randrack, and my age is unfortunately 50, uh, and. I'm in the same location as <laughs> coincidentally because we're married. married. <laughs> All right, Robert. I'm not married to them, so my name is R. Kind of. He's our kid. I, I, I'm in their illegitimate child. So. <laughs> yeah. So I, my name is Robert Bird. I go by Birdman. I am 48 years old, and I live in uh, Middle Southern Indiana. So I'm about <laughs> about an hour north of uh, Southern Indiana. So. Yep. Yep. Now, if you would like to see his resume, <laughs> he is available. All right, so, um, all right, now let's... Ladies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's preface that. Okay. All right. All right, now, favorite childhood game. So, looking back, thinking about childhood games, um, our family played a lot of Monopoly. It was not good. Um, there was a lot of fights. Right. <laughs> there was a lot of fights. As the way it should be with Monopoly. Um, as, as the way it should be. Um, but looking kind of back, probably my favorite, even though we did play Monopoly a lot, and I think it's just because of the, you know, what everyone else liked. Um, I actually was kind of liking his categories the most because we didn't really have a lot when I grew up. Like, we had the basics. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, we had, like, Survive, but we never played it right. We just played with the pieces. So I can't say, because otherwise I'd say that game. But we, I never actually played right. the game. You just played with the game. Yeah. yeah. So I think growing up, I really liked categories quite a bit. Um, that is until I discovered new games. But that wasn't until college. So that's what it, that's me. Yeah. I know yours is Axis and Allies. No, no, it's no. a childhood game. Oh, yeah. That would not. I mean, yes, I was, I was like in my teens, tweens area. So when I, when Axis and Allies came out. So you consider it childhood, but when I see childhood, I'm thinking as a kid. So then I'm thinking, okay, what did I play as a kid? Well, I played Clue, you know, I think in the oh, video yeah, before I, I played Clue by myself. <laughs> but, and, but there was also I, I, Uncle Wiggly, the game, which is way back. You'd have to go, I'm sure you can find it on board gaming still, but Uncle Wiggly we played a lot as a kid. And there was also Stay Alive, which you played a lot, which was a little Marvel game. And I think Stay I still alive. have that one Stay in the, the vintage vault in the yeah. closet. I keep getting it. What about you? My favorite game as a kid is Othello. So I... My, I feel silly being the only one that actually played childhood games in my childhood. Well, I mean, uh, so as a child child before I was adopted. And so before I was adopted, we didn't, I didn't play board games. So after I got adopted, my dad taught me how to play chess and Othello. And my mom taught me how to play Euchre and Cribbage. And those are all great, but my dad and I really bonded around Othello. He was a brain surgeon when he was seven. That's right. <laughs> so when did you get into the hobby, the board game hobby? So I think for me though, um, I was in college, I was introduced to a game uh, that people called Bastard, also known as Catan. Uh, <laughs> I, because I, I wanted to buy Catan at one point, that wasn't at the time found in Targets. I went to a board gaming store and then I found uh, uh, Carcassonne and I found Firefly because it was one of my favorite, still mm -hmm. is one of my favorite TV series of all time. And I ended up picking up Firefly and I thought I was super cool having some unique um, board games until I met uh randy and realized my flawed thinking <laughs> no your thinking was a flaw yeah. 
It just was uh, <laughs> wasn't prepared for the no. vastness. Well, I mean, it's so funny because, like, in my family, like, I was the introducer to of the new board games. Like, we we we, you know, I taught them Firefly. I ended up teaching them Carcassonne. We ended up getting, um, you know, the expansions to Catan, not just playing Catan. So it's like I was dabbling mm-hmm. in some of that, and then um, I had you know, met Randy dating. And he's like, I like board games. And I'm like, I like board games. And no. then our second date, he's like, Hey, come over to my basement. And I'm like, um, creepy mom. If I don't message you every two hours, <laughs> call the police. To be fair, I paid for my divorce in board games. <laughs> so, so, so I go over there and I see his collection at the time was 2000 board games. And I realized I knew nothing. And so I guess part of me wants to say I got into the hobby in college, but another part of me is like, actually, it wasn't until right. I met Randy that I really understood board games. What about uh, you? When did you get into the hobby? Uh, you know, the game what got me into the hobby was Axis and Allies yeah. and Fortress America and that Games Master series, uh, Conquest of the Empire. Those were the three Show that we them. had. Well, I didn't have that one huh. or the Pirate when the Broadside oh, like boarding parties. So whenever I was, you know, in college, not college, it was junior high, high school is when we started playing them, and that's what got me hooked. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had games. I played games growing up all the time, but that was the one, those were the ones that got me firmly into it. But then, the you know, mar- the market basically died in America for board games for years with Hasbro buying up all the industry companies. So, you know, it wasn't until I discovered Catan and Dominion that I got back into it. And right. my, my collection bloomed. Yeah, you know, it was That's stagnant for it. many, many years. <laughs> so, what about you? What got you went well, in? Like Randy, I was playing board games ever since I got adopted at age nine. So, but to really say I got into the hobby wasn't until, like you, I met Randy. But I met Randy much longer than ago than you did. But um, through his uh, mutual acquaintance, we'll say. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> So, but it started coming over here and initially it was the visit, uh, it was with my friend and our mutual acquaintance him and we were playing other stuff, but Randy, I and our uh, friend John started playing Axis and Allies. And so that's what got me up. And so like Randy was Axis and Allies. And then he taught me a much better game, which is Fortress America. And so then we really liked that. And so, but then just slowly learned other stuff. So I've always liked Catan, but that was not the intro game for me. It was Axis and Allies. Yeah. All right. So um, what first game did you purchase? Do you still own that game? So um, me purchasing. So we had a bunch of like family games, but obviously my parents bought those. So the first one I would have to say is Carcassonne and Catan. Um but they were repetitive uh, to Randy's collection. So I ended up giving them to my mother or my brother, one of the two, mm-hmm. when, you know, we didn't, I didn't need him anymore because he already had like six sure. copies of everything. So um, I let those go. <laughs> go. Um, what about you? What was the first one you purchased? Yeah, I was thinking hard about this question because trying to remember back, you know, not 50 years, but almost 50 years ago, <laughs> And I was like, it, I can remember the ones I can remember. I know I purchased mm-hmm. out of all right. Oddly, you're going to be surprised by this answer. It wasn't a board game. It was a role playing game. And that was the Marvel superheroes role playing game. And I vividly remember because uh, we had a, a hobby shop, something to do at the mall that had a clearance bin. And every time I go there to the mall, I would check out their clearance rack and I got any expansions for the Marvel Super Heroes role playing game that were on clearance every time I went there because you know I only well, had like fifteen bucks allowance and right. I had to save it up because I, I I starved myself all through school not eating I would keep because it was supposed to be my money for lunch <laughs> and I kept it so I could go buy these expansions so I would get them for that role playing game and then I also picked up Facts and Five which was the precursor to categories that was from Avalon Hill and that's my oldest game in my collection nineteen sixties game. Uh, and that that those were all in that same era. I don't know which was first. It was one of those two. Well, now you didn't say we were including role playing games because I bought a lot more role playing games because I found role playing games before I really got into the board game hobby. So well, you're talking it about? I mean, they're games. Well, okay. So well, in that case, World of Darkness, baby. It says first game. It doesn't say first board game. Ah, uh, well. And do you still own it? 
World of Darkness? Yes. Um, no. I actually, during my first divorce, I pretty much... First divorce? You got well, more than one? Are you planning another? <laughs> no, no. But I, I combined first marriage and divorce, okay? No, but during that divorce, um, I was trying to figure out what was me and what was him. And a lot of, he did a lot of role playing and mm. I ended up selling it well, well and so well part of it was is that um i ended up selling it all a because i needed the money because of the divorce and b because um i was trying to figure out like i said right. and it turns out that i do actually enjoy role playing on my own mm -hmm. um so i i actually ended up buying a lot of the collection back so do i have those copies no but you still have the game but I still have a yeah. version of my favorite one. So I don't have um, World of Dark, New World of Darkness, but I have a lot well, of who, the old. Who, nobody likes that version anyway. Well, so, so that was the first one I bought though, yeah. was oh, the okay. New World, um, you know, the Chromebook and all that mess. But then um, then I found Old World of Darkness yeah. and found that that was way much better. And so that's the ones I ended up rebuying. I ended up my, rebuying all the old and, and if there's any doubt in the question, yes, I still own everything. So yes. <laughs> there's no doubt. You may not be able to find it, but he has it. I, he does. I, I definitely here. have the Marvel role-playing game still, and I definitely have Facts and Five in my vintage closet. Oh, wow. Um, I honestly, I had a very hard time thinking about the first game I purchased. I know for a fact what was my first Kickstarter. And I, that, I think, really got me into the hobby, per se, as far as buying and collecting games myself. And that was Conquest of Spiros. Not a great game. Not awful, but not a great game. But that was my very first Kickstarter. But I don't know. It might have been Thunderstone, because that was uh, the first game I bought at Gen Con ever. Um, it might be a cribbage board. So it's, it's going to be something like that. But I honestly can't remember the very first game I ever bought. Okay. But I still own all those books. All right. Any other hobbies? So <laughs> this is going to take way you a while. too many. All right. So Miss Miranda <laughs> is very open to new experiences, which means she has a lot of hobbies. But the, I think the big ones, obviously. What's the what? What's the main one you do while we play board games? So no. Well, so there. So let me. Let me Ignore answer my question. The and no. Yeah, besides play taking a nap yeah. and playing on her phone. Okay, so so we obviously talked about me role playing, right? So I don't do as much of that as I would like to, just because we typically play more board games. The other thing I like to do is a lot of crafting, um, specifically crocheting. So I that's heavy crochet. Yes, I'm a heavy crochet. I love crocheting. I do blankets all the time. I do really cool stuff. But more importantly, she's making me a Doctor Who scarf. I am. I am. I'm almost done. Um, so, so, but then the other thing that I think is actually a fairly new hobby for me is I'm writing. I mm -hmm. published my first book this year. Um, it's still hobby level. Um, I'm super excited about that and I'm already on book number two. So I think those are probably my bigger hobbies right now, even though I've done a lot of stuff. Like I still have soap making stuff. I have chocolatiering stuff. I have anime. You're yeah. anime. You're I, like I love, a, I love me, one piece uh, yes, and... I love me some anime. Don't get me wrong. I'm a video gamer. Like I like video games. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot that I like to do. Um, but I think right now those are probably my main hobbies, if you will. Randy, your hobby is collection. Now, no. Robert, <laughs> he, he, Randy is not just a collector. He's a completionist through and through with a, with, yes, yeah. with the well, collection. Yeah. But I also play my games. I no, also, no, no. You play board games. Board games, yeah. I have a collection of he video games. He has a crap ton of video games that are board games. still wrapped. Yeah, I, They're I, still I, wrapped. From way back. Because yeah. I have every system pretty much from the Atari 2600 to present. And, you know, we I have all the games for all those systems I ever had still. Uh, so I did give up my ColecoVision. I'm still sad about that because I had a broken joystick. But uh, I, I don't find myself playing them as often right. now, which I, you know, I pass that on to my son. But and he plays enough for all yeah. of us combined. But we do, I do still play Rock Band quite a bit and some of the like quicker games mm -hmm. that I can play. And Borderlands, I love Borderlands. So if you ever see Randrak on Borderlands, that's me, you can join me. So that guy right there. Yep. So uh, yeah, so that, that and then I also uh, enjoy movies mm -hmm. and I've got a good collection of those. 
I also uh, write. I write murder mysteries. Throughout Listen, Halloween if you guys love satire, it so is so much fun. It is the the. I really think Randy should get his stuff published, especially now that I know how to do it since I did it myself. I would love to publish some of your murder I mysteries. I would probably like to turn it into a book. To see if I don't think that. we should do a book. I think, you know, because they buy boxed murder mysteries. Well, That's I tried we that once and it didn't go well. Uh, and yeah, then I but... tried to do them live and it went okay at first. And then we had a horrible turn one year. Uh, but, you know, as far as in general, I, I think most of my writing would fall more into the screenplay mm -hmm. realm than they would do because I'm I'm not good at embellishing and writing. You know, I, my book I think is going to be a 400, 500 page novel. Turns out to be 27 pages, you know, <laughs> but, but it's all really good dialogue and everything. So I like writing dialogue. Right. Um, but in addition, uh, I also dabble in art. You know, I, I like to draw from time to time. He actually is really, really good and I have to make him do it. Like I'm like, all right, we're sitting down to color. Here's your paper you can draw. Um, so it's something that we, we have yeah. crafting days with Sarah and me, and it's one way to engage. The and kids. I designed our logo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. You did. All right, Robert, what are your other hobbies? So nothing as grandiose as that. I, I'm an avid comic book collector. I'm an avid reader. So I have a pretty good book, a science fiction, fantasy book, col uh, book collection and, um, an avid video gamer as well. So I don't have the amount of video games, but I'm a huge RPG video game player. So I have a vast collection of you RPGs. have an amazing dog. And, uh, but that, he's not a hab uh, hobby, he's my fur baby, so. so. <laughs> yeah. But yes, I do, I love my dog, his name's Tucker. Yeah, all right, so breakthrough game. What do they mean by breakthrough game? The game that real, I think, that, 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 sucked, that, you that, that suck you in, and I know for a fact what mine is. Mine's Firefly. That because Carcassonne was okay, Catan was a good, uh, and it may be between the two, but like Catan, you know, Catan I played with a couple of people and that was kind of the game we played. And It's I, a breakthrough for a lot of people. But I think I didn't realize what board games could be until I played Firefly because I was like, wait, what is this? This is like mm -hmm. different mechanics because Catan, because Catan is, you know, resource management a little bit, like it made a little sense, you know, because you still had a board or whatever. But when you got to Firefly, having ships, picking up stuff, moving things around, it was like, wait a minute. I guess experiencing the different mechanism. And, you know, and that really drove me to be like, so when Randy was like, hey, teach me this, and then us playing some of the other games, it was just, it, that game really blew that, my mind. That one sucked you in. Firefly yeah. sucked. Well, it kind of sucked me in, in the sense that now we're married. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, I think it turned out mm -hmm. probably should be your favorite game. Um, so, you know, if we don't count like the Games Master series, which I still consider the ones that sucked me in. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about modern games, it have to be Dominion. I mean, that's the one that yeah. I got addicted to and was playing religiously all the time. Uh, and I ended up getting every expansion for it. I still buy every expansion for it. We never play it. But well, yeah. I'd like to. It's I would just, love to. But. It, it's, it's such a fun game still. Mm -hmm. And you, there's so much variety in it. But uh, that's the only game I played competitively at Gen Con, too, in a tournament. So, uh, Hands down, Puerto Rico. My favorite. That game sucked me in. It introduced, like you, mechanics I didn't know existed in a board game. And it just really blew my mind wide open to the hobby. Yeah. Um, all right. What theme always draws you in? Um, this is a good question. I like city building a lot. So I like building in general. So if we have games like, so I guess the simulation kind of life of where you build. So like farming kind of draws me in um, or like civ building. So you're like building a city or mm -hmm. city planning or something like that. Um, some of the economics always draw me in. Um, I will say for whatever reason, I always get attracted to pirate games, even though they're always take that and I hate them so much. I don't know why I love. <laughs> this is kind of one of those Arr. weird things. Like, I'm like, I would love a pirate game where you're not actually going after each player. Like, so I don't know. a friendly pirates game. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I don't mind, like, going on a board and stealing stuff. She likes it when it's Randy game steals her booty. <laughs> <laughs> So no, give him I, a Pirates of Penzance. <laughs> I okay. No, no. Okay, so I think of Port Royal, the 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 uh, video game where you can become a pirate, but you still sell your goods. Well, we have and the you board still... game of Port Royal. We yeah. play. We actually. I think Libertalia is pretty, pretty good, good as far as that. It, there's not. A, that's not a mean game. Well, no, it there's is. not. It can be. It can be. 
No, yeah. there are there are some pirate games that we played that were actually pretty all right, like the mini pirate game, the yeah, tiny epic pirates. Tiny epic pirates. Um, I think one was was actually pretty decent. Um, but for some reason that draws me in, and I always, I always be like, there's take that in, and it's like, well, <laughs> dumb, and it's pirate game. <laughs> so that that's kind of one of those weird right. ones that draw me in, and there's really no reason it should draw me in. What about you? What's your theme that always draws you? I think space? you already no no no. You know we should know this one. What if there's ever a game that comes out? Alice. Well, that too, but <laughs> so you got space and Alice both will work. All of space, <laughs> there's hit or miss. There's one genre or one theme that I say almost invariably the games are good. Uh, at. Traitor. Roman. Yep. Oh, Roman. Roman. Roman themed games. And very, I don't know what it is about the Roman theme. It just lends itself so well to board games, and there's so much variety. It's not just because I mean the Romans were known for building. They're known for conquering. They're known for all kinds of things, but. The, there's so many good games under the Roman theme umbrella, and I, if I see one, I almost always pick it up. I, I love Roman themed games, but I'm more fantasy themed. I, I like being able to, I like whether it's a, going into a dungeon or whether it's deck building, but if it's fantasy themed, I, I like that a lot. So. Yeah. Favorite mechanisms? Uh, I love resource management, I love engine building. Um, and I typically have like work replacement, like you put that on a board, I will play it. Like, mm -hmm. especially if you can get all three. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm okay with deck building. I, I like deck building quite a bit. Um, I'm very comfortable with deck building, but when you really talk about favorite, it's really about in integrating that resource management mm -hmm. and engine building, um, with a little, and and honestly, it's actually those two. Um, how you do that, I, I, don't, right. I don't care. You can do it through cards. You can do it through worker placement. But those two, I, I really love. What about you? Uh, well, that's one we share a lot in common on. We both like the same kinds of games. But your favorite is Trader. I like Hidden Trader on top of that. Yes, and I like Hidden Trader games, specifically Battlestar Galactica. But there's other ones too. But that's one of the, I like that mechanic and it's, I'm the only one in this group that does. But the other one that we did, you didn't mention that I think you would agree with is the multiple, multiple use cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's, I think it's a it's, favorite. It's, it's rare it's becoming, to find them. It's becoming it's, a favorite. Yeah. Because the more games that I'm playing that have multiple use cards, the more I'm liking it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we got to finally play Glory to Rome, and I loved that game. It was so good. Mm -hmm. I know, and you have to wait till Christmas. Jerks. <laughs> um, so, no, I but you're talking about favorite. And I, and I can see that I do like to be able to play the cards shifting. But at the end of the day, the reason why you like the card shifting is because you have to choose between engine building resource management. Yeah. Like, that's really... And like I said, I don't care how I do resource management and engine building. It can be through cards. It can be through player work, you know, work replacement. Mm -hmm. But those two, I almost, that's how you're going to get me my, to be my favorite. Yeah. Like, look at my favorites, right? Um, Zulkin, look at, um, and uh, Great Western Trail and uh, Pipeline and Terraforming Mars. Yeah. All of those Terraforming are Terraforming Mars is amazing for engine building. Yeah. If you, if you let people build their engine don't end the game by actually terrible. That's the only planet. way I can win. <laughs> All right. Which is really a shame because I just want to play What about you, Rob? Um, deck building has always been one of my favorite mechanisms. Thunderstone is one of my very favorite games. I love it. Um, but a mechanism that you guys didn't mention that I like quite a bit is a rondel. I like a good rondel selection. So Trojan, even though it's Roman themed, I like the, the Macala rondel type mechanisms. So I like those a lot. All right. Newest game in the collection. Uh, me and Randy have the same uh, one. You skipped one. No, oh, no mechanism. You do that not you like. You do to not play. like. I think you already know about it. I don't want yeah. to take that. Guess. Ours is why he loves. Yeah, is our least favorite. We don't like take that. I don't, I, I don't well, like no. take that. Hidden trader. Hidden trader. Oh, I don't like that either. That's my least favorite mechanism. What, no, that's not mine. Trader. I know. I'm oh, saying. No, I'm, I thought you agreed, I, but I could see take that being maybe being worse for you. No, I, I really. But I yeah. really don't like hidden trader. I I like being able to come up with a strategy, and then if it works, great. If it doesn't work, that's my fault, not because Randy's stabbing in the back. Right. Um, and I will say a mechanism. Uh, and this this one I won't mention. Mechanisms I don't like, but I am good at is freaking area control. 
I hate area control so much, and yet I keep winning them, and I don't know, and I think it's because... Bless, bless your heart. <laughs> it's so, like, I'm like, I hate this so much. It, anyway, that one's a weird random one, and I think it, because a lot of it has to do with take that, you yeah. end up fighting yeah. over regions. I mean, mine's player elimination. Absolutely. It is. I will not it buy, is. A, that one I will is not buy a game if it's that, featured That's player my elimination. number two. And, yeah. you know, then it would be uh, games that are, uh, take that probably would be second, I would say. But uh, player elimination, take that. And and then the co-op games where it's simply shuffling a deck, like pandemic. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, co-op games have upped their game quite significantly. Some of them, yeah, that's why I'm specific. Now, I would normally have just said I hate co-op games. Right. I'm qualified. It took us years to change his attitude. To be fair, we've had a couple of good co-op games. games. Yeah, yeah, there's but many I'm, co-op I'm games. I'm qualified and saying ones where you simply shuffle yeah. a deck. Yeah. All right. So, um, newest game in the collection is the same for me and Randy because we yep. literally have the same it's collection. right here. We just picked it up. This is actually, one of our viewers yeah. recommended it, so we're going to be giving yeah, it a Yeah, I, I was going to look for it, so I, I, I don't have the money to buy it's, it. Uh, it's actually from the company that makes Set of Watch, so it's part of the Set of Watch series, okay. which I have Set of Watch. We haven't played that yet. So, this is a roll and write that you get to basically build. It's your built. You're going to like this because you get to build like your equipment and weapons and potions and well, I don't need to sleep tonight. <laughs> All right. Um, what about your, what's your newest game? Um, it would be Flamecraft. Yeah, I'm totally jealous. Mine hasn't come in yet. So I'm, I'm putting up the protest. <laughs> I actually, I ended up emailing the, the people and say, just to make sure, did I fill out the pledge manager? <laughs> because it could be that I missed the email because I don't remember anything. And they did say I'm good. Now I'm just it's just not here because they're a W. Well, I think it's well, a, I think I'm because in W, and I think it's because I had add ons. I did too. Oh, well, lame. Okay, that might be. all right. So, yeah, you are a B. All oh. right, so <laughs> not the way I meant it. All right, um, favorite player count. I uh, it depends on the game, yeah, it, it totally depends. depends on the game. I love two player games. And so if I had to pick an absolute favorite, it'd be two player. But I like playing with us. I do too. I love three to four player games, but I really like two player games. See, I see how it is. I, it depends on the game is specifically there because I would say two player is one of my least favorite in the sense that I, it's almost invariably I'm trying to find more people to play a, a game because so many games require, I, I, I feel like they, they dumb them down for two players. And I don't like that, especially when you I, those small I, box ones that are dedicated for two players. I agree that them. some games are dumbed down for two players, but there's so many good two player games. So I mean, Targi, hello. Yeah. So so here's the thing. I I um I tell you what. I do typically I do not like the six plus players unless it's like a rolling yeah, right. I, I, I'm the you same get line. more than yeah. than six, and it starts to get a little crazy and weird. I, yeah. Um, unless it's a roll and write where everyone's doing the yeah. same thing. Because I do not like waiting when you have long, my ADD kicks in. And if I have to wait 30 minutes for my turn. Or I, an hour and a half in Battlestar. Why are you all looking at me? So, I didn't create the game. I still love it. I didn't create it. Uh, so, so I, that's my caveat is when you start getting six and you're, and you're having to wait on people. Yeah. It gets a bit much. Yeah. I think three to five is the sweet spot. Usually three to four, but Battlestar is sweet at five. So, and I, I think there are a lot of games that, you know, especially in the Euros that are three yeah. to five, and ideally. But I, I really can't, if I had to pick one, it's two, but two to four. I mean, that's my sweet spot. What is your board game pet peeve? Waiting. I, I hate, it's not that hard. <laughs> Randy, if, listen, if you're already I waiting. Already yeah, listen, but yes, hers is if, waiting. If you are, if I, listen, if you're already going to win the game and it is the last turn, I don't care if you get an extra three points. You've already won the game. Just end it. You don't need to feel. He will no. sit there for thirty minutes to figure out how to net two it's points, not, and he's already won. It's not even that. It's you're done. You're you're. I'm done. And then two seconds. Is it my turn yet? You don't even give it two seconds. Sometimes it's like she's. Ugh. Listen, that's why I love continuous. That's another mechanism I really enjoy. A, Conti a yeah. continuous play. Like I don't want simultaneous play. Yeah, simultaneous play. That's what I want. Is I want to be. 
do my thing, do my thing. And I don't want mind waiting until the round, you know. She is waiting for this category. <laughs> Did you notice how she jumped on this <laughs> job? <laughs> she directed it at me. Because he's the worst in our group, besides, well, there's a couple of Your other. brother. Yeah, uh, Caleb's listen, really bad. They, they both get the longest player card. Yeah, well, okay, because here's the thing. We're playing Terraforming Mars, right? He takes, like, 30 minutes. Andrew takes 30 minutes. You take five. Because I, I take suck, five. but no. that's not the point. No, but I've already planned because it's yeah. been an hour. And it's my <laughs> turn. And it's like, so I have five minutes. I'm like, Dan, all right. And then we have to wait another hour. It's, <laughs> it's nap time. But, but what happens when we play Terraforming Mars? You take your turn, and then Caleb, he always sits to my right when we play Terraforming Mars. And he takes his turn and takes forever. And then my turn comes up as soon as my turn comes up. I didn't even know. Is it my turn yet? Is it my turn? Are you done? Is it my turn? Oh, wait. Then no! Says, I want to make sure, because here's what ends up happening. I get distracted. I end up crocheting. I get up to go do laundry. I go do whatever because they take forever. And so I don't want people to wait on me because I've been waiting on them for forever and I know how annoying it is. And so I, I do end up over asking. Yeah. So what's your pet peeve, me over asking? That's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can do an entire video on this yeah, category yeah. alone. Yeah, we're going to stick, we're gonna stick with one. We're going to stick with I one. I can't. No, it's cards in the same direction. You limiting me to one. That's it has to one. be cards in the same direction. Uh, that's a big one. It has to be well, number one. Somebody me. actually, I was watching somebody else's video of this, and they brought up one, and I'm like, yes. And it's in. When it's in nothing to do with gameplay. It's the rule books. When they put in there the contents, and they don't put the pictures of the, the items, or especially if they use like their own terminology for yeah. stuff throughout the book. From a rule book perspective, I hate that. That's my biggest pet peeve on the rule book side. On gameplay, though, on gameplay, it's either people having food at the table. Yeah, I can see that by him. That one is a big one. Uh, and drinks on my table that are near the game. Uh, or... Hey, I replaced it. You did. <laughs> or the other one would be the fact that you know, her every time I'm taking my turn. <laughs> is it my turn yet? Is it my turn yet? I just want to make sure no one's waiting on me. All right, what's your pet peeve? Um, I don't know. Um, people yelling. I mean, it, it, people get over over excited about stuff. I think no. I have to step away. I think for you, actually, it's threats. It yeah, threatening. It, threatening <laughs> really gets to me bad. And I try not to do it. I, I catch myself it. doing it because I, I didn't realize how much this bothers me. It people. really does bother me. And I and I've tried recently. But to but, but, to... but that I so I, I think I, I think you're right. I think threatening is probably my number one. But a very close number two is it's almost like an anxiety thing. Yeah. When when there's a bunch of people getting either excited or they're laughing, it, you know, it could be everybody's having a great time, but for some reason. That just gets me where I gotta I gotta get out and it's gotta get quiet. Yeah. All right. So favorite player color, purple, blue, blue. blue. It, it, she never has to compete for purple. So I know blue is my favorite, but I don't get to play blue. And the reason why I don't get to play blue is because Randy will cry. <laughs> literally, literally, cry. literally cry. 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 And you will I'll yeah. out. I don't cry. By and I'll move your piece. By definition, crying. He will <laughs> cry if he's not blue. But then it's not just that. It's compounded that my other friend, Vincent, he has to be blue. So then he will pout if he don't get blue. So, okay, red. I like red a lot. I don't get red because as soon as I come to the table, Caleb takes the red. Or Heather takes the red. So do I get black? No, someone else get black. You know, I don't get Vincent a favorite came color. Here and we played terraforming Mars. I was blue, and he didn't ever say a word. Yeah, well, I you know, <laughs> so I will say my backup color is green. So most most games yeah. don't have purple, so I play green typically. I don't take your red. No, you don't. Nope. No. So I'm usually yellow. <laughs> All right. Um, read a rule book or watch how to play videos. How to play videos. I don't have the attention span to read a rule book. Both. Um, I, I I really have to do both. And I have to be a rule book. I yeah. cannot learn from a video. No, he doesn't like learning from other people either. No, you don't. I, I can be an expert at a game like Too Many Bones. Favorite game. I can teach it blindfolded. He would still need to read the rule book. Yep. Yep. I, I will never read it. I actually was like, all right, I'm reading the rule book. I'm learning this game. AKA I watched the video. And then I sort of read the rule book. Um, and I was teaching it. I was prepared to teach it. Like I had watched mm -hmm. enough videos. And Randy was like, I just don't understand what you're saying. I don't want you. And I just handed him the rule book. I'm like, 
there was no point in me even trying. So I stopped. Um, and but it does that. feel really good to know that I'm explaining a rule and Randy doesn't agree with the rule, so he has to look at the rule book and I'm right. Yeah, that's that it. Feels really really once. Good. You shush. Maybe once. All right. Um, favorite snack to eat while gaming? Well, usually it's back here. <laughs> while well, I have so, auxiliary tables for yes, that purpose. Yes, that's why it's back here. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite snack. Just whatever's available. I know, right? Granola, chips, whatever, cookies. Well, that's we, we that's cool. well, like, we, If I'm going to eat something yeah. while I'm playing a game, it's going to have to be cookies. Yeah. Well, I mean, the reality is, is we, because we, we, we game quite a bit, but yeah. we have full meals at the table. We do. So, I mean, I, food, favorite snack is food. Yeah, food, food, food. food's a good one. All right. Have you been to a board game convention? Which ones? Uh, <laughs> Gen Con. Uh, Gen Con. So how many times have you been to Gen Con? Do you know? How many years have we been together? Uh, we <laughs> that went, many? Our first one was we went it was in 2016. Every year we've been married. Well, we plus went, one. Yeah, 2016. So we've been, been your first. So I've been six. And mine was 2010. Oh, no, was there was first. a Gen Con that didn't happen. So five. Well, yeah. So five. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... And I and I and I was going before Randy, and I and I think for Randy is actually is probably probably scary for you the first time. Oh yeah, because, well, I mean because you're so introverted. Yeah, it back was, then it's still especially. scary for me. What well, but thinking? especially back then though, I mean you've really come out of your shell I, quite I, a bit since then. I will say I went to Origins way before I even met Randy. Yeah, even, but I was focusing on role playing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I, I'm very new to Origins. I've only been what three times, I think, is yeah. that I've been with you guys. Whatever, that, however many times you've taken me, that's the only times I've yeah. been. So but Gen I, Con, man, I, I cannot honestly count how many times I've been. It's yeah. been a lot. So Gen Con a lot. Um, there is one in Louisville that we go to, a little small one that mm -hmm. I've been to a couple times. There's one in Lexington that I've been to a couple times. Well, we've been to a lot of local ones, like Rob's. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah we, one well, you there. know, I, so we've been to quite a few local ones. Um, uh, to add on this, which is the one that you want to go? That one we did to. the cruise one too. Yeah, we did. Yeah, this. but I would one love. That you to, go. I would love to go to Pax Unplugged. I want to go to Essen. Yep. Well, yeah, but that that's a pipe dream. To me. <laughs> so Essen is the pipe dream. That would be the ultimate. But that's the pipe. You're dream. not coming I, with us. Maybe if I have the money, <laughs> that's an expensive we're, trip. We're just but but it, but it's but it's more like you know what's realistic. You know, and Pax Unplugged is Philadelphia, if I remember correctly. So I, I think it's a lot more doable. And there's still, and I've just heard amazing things about Pax. I'm going to Essen. I would love to go to Essen. I'm going to Essen. I don't know what I will have to do to get there, um, but I'm willing to negotiate. If anybody's willing to buy kidneys, so I can go to Essen. I'll <laughs> um, or maybe provide housing. Uh, we will come hang out with you. Yeah. Which unreleased games are you excited for? <gasps> Luna Rush. It's it's kickstarted. There's not enough kickstart. You, you need to go <laughs> and back Lunar Rush so that I can get my copy. With all the nice things added. Right. Because it's amazing. Get over yourself. Back it. <laughs> They're not paying me to do this. I just want my game. <laughs> so that's the one I'm super most excited for. That's the one I want. It is going now. Randy will put the link in below in the comments because he loves me because I want it back so I can get a copy and I think they should totally sponsor me. That's all I'm saying. Randy, what is the game that you're most excited well, for? Well, first of all, I, I struggled with this because I've got so many in flight and I didn't realize how many I had in flight 80. until you this have question. 80. I have 80 in flight right now. Mama mia. I remember one of them, Luna Rush, again. <laughs> so. Actually, that was not even on the list, 81, because that was considering that was yours, but I didn't add it to my list, so I need to. Well, yeah. first of all, it hasn't funded yet. So, What's your number one out of all I the I struggled 80. to go through them all, and it, it turns out it's not even a Kickstarter. It's one I pre-ordered through our local game shop, uh -huh. and, that's, that's, and you will want this one, too, because it's Teletum. Or Tylate, the Tiletum, or oh, Tiletum, yeah, that looks it so is good. The latest T series game, yeah. and I by the, the original makers of Zolkin, not just the T series game, it's got it by the people that made Zolkin. And it I'm looks amazing. Like I've heard great things about it. I probably am going to like that. Yeah. What, what's you? What are you excited about? I've been waiting for two years for Adventures in Neverland, so I'm really excited for that one. Can is it finally coming through? No, it, it, there, there's been more delays. So I'm hopefully they get that fixed, and hopefully by the end of the year that gets shipped out. 
And then is it across the sea or like where's no, it being delayed? No, it's, at? it's it's still it's still in development. I think there was a printing issue, and then they had to redo stuff. But um, and I'm also super excited for Voidfall. So. Oh yeah, yeah that one. It's, so I, I think those, I got I think, an update on that. Yeah, the so I think those are my main two: is Adventures in Neverland because it's been forever, and then Voidfall. Open and punch right away, or wait until you play. Wait until you play. And here's why. Oh God, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is why I say this for two reasons. One, there's games that will still be in the shrink wrap, and I can sell when Randy dies. <laughs> <laughs> Because we would not have a chance to play no, it. No, because I'm There's not going to die no until we reviewed every game. game. And you skipped the question, by the way. We I did. Go back, yeah, we got to go back to 18. But anyway, well, so open and punch. Uh, open and punch right away. No. It bothers me to, and, and it, evidently it doesn't bother Randy, because you go down into the board game collection, and there's tons of unwrapped games. I can see a bunch of free I enjoy in going down here just opening his games and not telling him. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> Do that to me. It is so much fun. No, but if you leave it shrink wrapped, I know we haven't played it yet, so I can pick oh, it out. Oh, it's so much fun. See, oh you're gonna be surprised by this, but I would say open a bunch right away too. The really? problem is I acquire them faster <laughs> than I can open a bunch them right away. So that's why there's a backlog of sealed I, games. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone home with a game from here that I'll get at that card house, and I don't go to bed until two o'clock in the morning because I'm punching that game. Now that I won't do. It, Bothers and if it, me. If it, it has really stickers, does, does it? that's almost a pet peeve. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, like wow. I gotta punch yeah, it out. Stickers that should have been on my pet. Peeve. That should have been. That should have been on my pet peeve. Yeah, because if it has stickers, I will be then no, up no. till two in the morning texting you about yeah. the fact that it has stickers. No, no it's <laughs> not just stickers, but stickers and be called deluxe. Yeah, yeah. If, it's, if it's considered deluxe, it should With be stickers? sealed, pampered. They should have kissed it before they pack, package it and shipped it to me. I do not want to see the word deluxe on it or deluxified. That's even worse. Yeah. Because that's not even a real word. <laughs> All right. Favorite thing about board gaming? This right here. Mm -hmm. Us talking about board games. I love playing them. I love it, but I like playing it, then talking about it afterwards. See, so... I uh, for me, I like building. I really do. I like the mental challenge of a board game. And this is why you don't find me doing a lot of um, party games per se, because it doesn't give me the the mental, you yeah. know, like trying to figure it out, right? Like, and that's something that I really do enjoy. I, I like to a little bit problem solve, like the engine building, mm -hmm. all of that. I really, really enjoy it. And then not only that, but I get to do it with friends, mm -hmm. right? Because especially like with at work and other places that you do that, they're typically like solo events and it's not, you know, it's, right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still love me a good puzzle, like for real. So, um, but it's lonely where in board games, you get the, you get to be with people that you love hopefully, to be with. yeah, you like to be with, hopefully, I mean, for the most part, for the most part. <laughs> Um, and then, but then you get to have that mental challenge and then yeah. you get to talk about it afterwards, um, and complain about it or love it however you will. And so I think that's one of my favorite things. What about you? Oh, I mean, obvious answer is winning, but besides that <laughs> <laughs> is I, he's not wrong. No, but the, besides that, I've met most of my friends that I didn't have like growing up. Yeah. I've met through gaming. And it's because I'm not a social person. I don't go out. I, I couldn't meet somebody at a bar or meet somebody at a social event. I would be the person at the wall, not talking to anybody. You know. Why well, you don't drink? Yeah, yeah, I don't drink, and you know, so I don't. I, when I'm in an awkward situation or in an uncomfortable, uncomfortable place, I don't do well at meeting people. But in my comfort zone, I can be social. That's where I can be social. Well, and I think with board games, there's established rules of play, right? Everyone knows what the expectations are to play, and you can build dialogue, yes, and, around the board game. Unless Randy and I are together, then those barriers kind of break down sometimes. Listen, I have to suffer through a lot. Okay, <laughs> so, but I think there is something about that because, you know, and that's, and that's true for everybody when there's an activity and everyone knows the rules. It's a lot easier to engage in social interaction and I think, you know, to Randy's point, I think board games do do that. And I've met a lot of people um, at the board game table that I, I wouldn't have met right. elsewhere. Yeah. And well, it sure. is a beautiful thing. Yeah, um, it so really I agree. is. I mean, that, there's people that, you know, look at me as odd because I have such a big collection of games. But it's not They're my collecting. games. It's it's 
this is what brings people over. I, I, you know, I'm known as Game Board Randy, and they're like, "Hey, you got to go check this guy's house. Yeah. You got to come over and join him for some games." And they come in, and then we meet new friends that way. That's how we've, you know, grown our friend base considerably. Yeah. And, and you know, and this is something that you know you are a collector, um, and and you value your collection. And I, but the other piece of it is, and that's what you've said multiple times, and I think it's really true, is that you see it as a connection to people. Um, and so, you know, yeah, I mean, there's tons of games you bought specifically, not because you necessarily did. I mean, of course you wanted them, but you bought them so that it was an opportunity to play that game with somebody. Yeah. Not because you just wanted the game. Well, I mean, and, and here's the thing. There was a game. I think there what was a game. We rated it like low, at like fours and whatever. And I was like, Randy, let's get rid of it. And he was like, no, what if someone else wants to play it? I'm like. It's a four. No one wants to play this. And even if they do, we're going to convince them that is not what they want to do. There is <laughs> there is 3,000 board games. We can find something else better than a four. We still have that game, by the way, for the record, because you can't get rid of it. We still have redacted. I mean, like, so, um, so there might be a conversation. Really, Randy, I'm trying to convince them if it's under a five, it doesn't need to be in the house. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Who else... Would you like to do this video? Randy? Well, the, the concern on this one is I don't know who has already done this video. I've, that, I've seen that's some people. That's a good people. point. So the one person that I, I know I recently talked to and has their own, their own channel is uh, Dustin at the BGE Tabletop. We did, I, I did my video with yeah. him the other day, and he was a lot of fun to talk to, and I'd love to hear his take on this. So if you have oh. not already done this video <laughs> and I missed it somehow on your channel, I'm challenging you, Dustin. I want someone who never gets on camera. Caleb. Oh, he your brother. I know it, He's but, not yeah, but that's not the question. The question is who would I like to see do this video? Oh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Caleb. Fair enough. I'd like to see him do it in a tutu. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, listen, I actually, I, you know what? Her, bro well, her brother is super smart. I love playing games with him. He's a lot of fun. And he has some really good ideas about games and why he likes games. Hey, and he's and really the games he likes to play. And yeah, and he loves to show his fingers <laughs> on camera. But, but that's it. You know, I, 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 wanted, I, want, I want him to meet other people and other people meet him and kind of get his, I, I think, I think, it, I think people dig it. I, you know, I, I, I love my brother. I'm slightly partial, uh, cause he's my brother, but I do love him. And, uh, it, I, I, you know, he, 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 what's funny. So it was like, I consider myself an introvert, but he beats me hands yeah. down. Sure. So. See, I don't sure. know if I agree, Rob. I don't know if I want him to do it because it's almost like the Dukes of Hazard with Waylon Jennings. <laughs> you know, it's, I, he's kind of our Waylon Jennings. Right? <laughs> you know, he, he's chimed in in the background on right. a few videos, provided commentaries. He's put his fingers into the camera. That's, I think, the most we want to get out of it. He, honestly. He's the Charlie and we're the Angels. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, hopefully, you'll come hang out with us again. Um, and hey, you'll probably see this one very, very soon. Yeah, I probably won't get to play it. Aww. All right, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.